Here is a video for analytical techniques for limits, and I guess this will be part three as far as the number of videos I've already posted for you. But let's say that initially the problem looks like this. We want to evaluate the limit as delta x goes to zero. So this triangle x, that's red delta x, and that's an important type of notation for anybody who's taking advanced math or science. For now, I'm not really going to worry about what it means. We'll learn about it later in the class, but I would read it, delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. What's f? That's a function. That's a formula of some kind. All right, so f of x is 2 over x minus 4. So there's our problem. Evaluate this limit for that function, okay? Uh, now, first of all, this might be the way that you encounter the problem when you're doing your assignment. Delta x goes to 0. I think delta x, although it's an important notation for math and science, it's, it's cumbersome to write down in a problem that's going to take this much work to complete, all right? So I, I'm going to use the variable h. I mean, delta x for us, it's just a variable. It's just a symbol. It doesn't really do anything, okay? So I'm going to let it be h instead. So what does this turn out to be? It'd be the limit is h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h for this function which would be like this, see? Limit h goes to zero. Uh, what if I substitute x plus h in for the x right there? I'll get uh, x plus h minus four. So two over x plus h minus four minus f of x, which is two over x minus four over h. All right, so there's my limit that I'm going to try to do, okay? We'll need to simplify this before we calculate the limit as h goes to zero. If we just try to do this limit by letting h be zero, you say h is going to zero, what if we push it all the way zit, all the way there? Uh, then you'll get zero on the top and zero on the bottom. And it's, in terms of calculating limits, that's totally meaningless and it doesn't help us, okay? All right, so that's what I'll do. Uh, before I get into that, I, I, Analytical techniques, what do I mean by that? I thought maybe I'd show you real quick. Uh, what's an analytical technique versus a numerical technique? Well, a numerical technique is something like this. Say we want the limit as x goes to 0 sine 2x over x. Making a table is an example of a numerical technique. Numerical, it relies strictly on numbers. I try to pick up a pattern in the numbers, as the x gets closer and closer to zero from either side, I see a pattern that this formula calculates a number closer and closer to two from either side, all right? So we could say that the limit as x goes to zero was two. Uh, but there's a leap of faith here. I mean, how do I know? There's still a lot of space in there. I mean, I can always put more zeros in there and get a number a little closer to zero. How do I know that this pattern is gonna keep up? All right, uh, there's, a, there's somewhat of a leap of faith to think that, yeah, the closer this gets to zero, the closer that's going to get to two. But that's the shortcoming of numerical techniques. An analytical technique doesn't have that shortcoming. We're going to totally break this down on paper, all right, until we can definitively get the limit. All right, so there's our limit. We need to simplify this, all right, okay. So about that, let's simplify that on another piece of paper. I thought I would, I just cannot resist giving you an analogy to what we're about to do because I, I think it can only help you understand it better, all right? What we're about to do to simplify and evaluate that limit is a lot like this. It's a lot like how you say, what's one third minus one fifth all divide by seven? Think about how you would do that. If you know how to do this, then you're off to a good start on the problem that we're about to do. I would need a common denominator here, which would be 15. It would be three times five. Take my first fraction, multiply top and bottom by five, which is essentially multiplying by one because five over five is one, and therefore we're not actually changing that number, minus 
1 fifth multiplied top and bottom by 3. There again we're multiplying by 1 so we're not really changing the number. But that'll get us a common denominator of 15, right? So we'll get 5 over 15 minus 3 over 15. Then we can subtract, now that we have a common denominator, 5 minus 3 all over 15, but also divided by 7, which we're going to have to wait to divide by 7. But 5 minus 3 over 15 is 2 over 15. Now at this point, I need to take 2 over 15 and divide by 7. Uh, I think it might look a little better if we do it like this. 2 over 15 divided by the fraction 7 over 1. I write it that way because uh, dividing one fraction by another would entail multiplying by the reciprocal. So I want to see that as 7 over 1. That's at least how I'm going to show you if I'm not going to skip any steps at all. Uh, okay, so this will be 2 over 15 times... The reciprocal of that, 1 over 7. We multiply fractions straight across. We'll get 2 times 1 over 15 times 7. So that's 2 over 105. All right? So let's say that, oh, we can do that. We understand it. All right, then we're off to a good start. Okay? All right. Now, we're going to do this limit, but we need to simplify it first. Okay, so here's the simplifying part. I decided that I would write it all out and just explain the work, okay? So there was that algebraic expression. Uh, I removed the limit part of it because I just want to simplify it right now. I want to reduce it as much as possible. So those fractions, that's a lot like what I was just showing you. The lowest common denominator is the product of x plus h minus 4 times x minus 4. So I take this first fraction, multiply top and bottom x minus 4. In the second one, multiply top and bottom by x plus h minus 4. Okay. Now, all right, when we do that, we'll have a common denominator, and we can subtract. And we'll take this minus that all over the common denominator. All right. That's what you're looking at here. In order to reduce it further, we're going to have to distribute. Multiply through the, by the 2 there and by the negative 2 there. Okay, And there's that common denominator. We're still dividing by 8, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. So let's see. Can you agree this will be 2x minus 8, and this will be negative 2x minus 2h plus 8? Okay. What I notice here is some of the terms cancel. The 2x and the negative 2x, the negative 8 and the 8. It just leaves me with negative 2h, all right? Okay, now I'm hoping this looks a lot like this. Really, that's what I'm hoping that you're seeing, is that that was a pretty good analogy to what we needed to do. So we get to this part, and all right, I've got a fraction up here. Negative 2h over x plus h minus 4 times x minus 4 divided by, well, h doesn't look like a fraction. But just to be uniform about it, I'll put h over 1, okay? h over 1, so it's one fraction divided by another. We need to divide. So how do you do that? How do you take one fraction and divide it by another? You multiply by the reciprocal. So what this really is is negative 2h over x plus h minus 4 times x minus 4 times 1 over h. Okay? Now here I'm trying to show a lot of work. Uh, I'm not saying everybody needs to show this much work. I mean, if I was doing this, I would do 90% of it in my head, all right? And I'm not bragging, but just I know how it works, and so I don't really need to show the steps. So if you need to show all the steps, if that makes you comfortable, then show all the steps. Uh, if you feel like you can do some of it in your head, that, that's fine too. Just do the amount of work you're comfortable with, but I want to see a reasonable amount of work on your part as it is my responsibility to grade your work and your answer. Okay, so how much work you show might vary a little bit from person to person. So I'm here now, and I'm multiplying these fractions, but I notice like I'm going to have a factor of h on the bottom and a factor of h on the top, and those will cancel, and it will leave me with this negative 2... I guess times a 1 on top, so that's just negative 2. 
and it will leave me with this times after canceling a one on the bottom. So I'll be like that. All right, once we get here, that's simplified. It's not going to get any simpler than that. All right, so let's pick up from this point. Okay, now let, let me remind you what we're doing. I needed to do this limit. In order to do that, I needed to simplify that algebraic expression. But that's what all this was, all right? And there's my simplified form. So here it goes. I'm going to continue from this point. This limit is now going to be seen as the limit as h goes to 0. And here's what I got once I broke that down into simplest terms, the absolute reduced form. I had a negative 2 on top. I had x plus h minus 4 over x minus 4, okay? Now I can, I can calculate this limit. What's the limit as h goes to 0? What happens to that if this thing right there, h, if that variable goes to 0? Uh, go, very, very, very small. Goes to 0. It goes away, okay? Uh, we'll push it all the way to 0. What's this going to look like if we push that h all the way to zero, it's going to be gone, and that's going to be x minus four. So we'll get negative two over x plus zero minus four. Well, that will just be x minus four times x minus four. The limit is applied, x plus zero minus four. All right, I get like that. That's okay. That's that's an answer. There's not really anything wrong with that, but we should simplify things. We should write them with the least amount of writing that's possible. So I, I can consolidate that. What's well, x minus 4 times itself? Well, to take something and multiply it by itself, there's a term for that called squaring it. So let's say x minus 4 squared. That's what I want to write. Okay, and now the limit has be, been done. So we took our problem. We wrote the limit in this form. We simplified just that part of it. I reintroduced the simplified form. Then I calculated the limit. And that's the whole problem.